Students, it's Mrs. Nelson. We're looking at illustrative math, grade 7, unit 3, activity 3.2, measuring circumference and diameter. I've given you a Google Sheet to make a copy of, and it'll look just like this once you're done. Actually, there's going to be no values here. Um, you'll need to determine your own values that you want to record. So you'll choose any diameter that you want by moving the slider. So I'll start with a diameter of 5 and 9 tenths. And then I will unroll that. So what it's doing is you'll notice that it is taking that yellow strip that's around the outside of that circle, that's its circumference, and it's unrolling it all the way across. And you can see it's bigger than my screen's allowing. So uh, you can see that it's unwrapped it all the way until this point. You need to record that circumference measurement. What is that linear measurement all the way around? And we want to do it to the nearest tenth, so I would say that's either 18 and 5 tenths or 18 and 6 tenths. Uh, I'll just do 18 and 5 tenths. We'll put that in our table for circumference. You'll notice that when you do that, you see a value that pops up over here. What I've done is I've programmed a very simple um, equation there. So I'm comparing diameter or circumference, excuse me, to diameter using division. So I have circumference divided by diameter. And I did that because we've practiced that before where we can see and compare those values in the columns and identify the constant of proportionality for this relationship if it is a proportional relationship. And so far, looking at all of these values, I would say yes, it is a proportional relationship because they're all pretty much the same number. And the error would be my measurement error where I can't get exactly that measurement of the circumference um, once I unroll that shape. To unroll the, or to start over, to re-roll the circle, you can just slide the unroll slider back or you can click the reset construction button and then choose another diameter. So after you've chosen at least three diameters, what you'll do is you will highlight just this, these two columns, the data in these two columns that you have, and then you're going to insert a chart. So go to file, or not file, go to the uh, menu bar and then choose insert and chart. And if it doesn't say already, let me move this so you can see it on the screen. If it doesn't say scatter chart already, go ahead and choose that as an option, a scatter chart or a line chart, either one, scatter chart or line chart is going to show you that same information. Um, with the line chart, it's going to connect all the dots together. And when they connect it, you can see that that is a very straight line. Um, and you can see that that is representing a proportional relationship. If I were to extend to have smaller diameters, because that's the issue here, it looks like it's not intersecting at the origin, but I also could only use the smallest diameter of three, which you can't see. Uh, there we go. Three was my smallest diameter. If I could use smaller diameters, I am pretty confident that it would pass through the origin, which makes sense because if you have a diameter of zero, you would certainly have a circumference of zero as well. And so I imagine that that value does work and is on our line. So after you do that, you're going to consider the relationship between these numbers. And you're going to think about the relationship between circumference and diameter of circles, any circles. You can see when I mouse right here that I see those different data points there, or if I change it back to scatter plot, um, you can see those different data points. And you can see that um, this is true for every circle. Every circle so far that we've measured is on this line. So they must be related to each other. So you'll do that um, with your spreadsheet and make that chart so that you can think more deeply about the relationship between circumference and diameter. Thanks for learning.